instructions for the correct installation of solar flux solar pumps. For optimum performance of solar flux pumps, the following data should be sent to Fluxinos with the purchase order. Diameter of the well. Depth of the water level in the well. Difference in height between the water level in the well and the tank. Distance from the well to the tank. Quantity of water to be pumped per day from 1,700 to 13,000 litres according to the depth of use. operator opens the crate in which he will find everything necessary. In the forefront we can see the pump wrapped in plastic film, the toolbox, the safety rope and the watertight coupling to connect the electric supply cable. We can also see wrapped in plastic the brochure which accompanies each pump giving its type, technical specifications, serial number and test date, together with a brief history of the manufacturing company. In this view, we can see the serial number and type of the pump we will install. Let's begin with the first operation, the coupling of the electric cable. This is a very important operation because if properly carried out, it will avoid problems in future. It is very simple to carry out because the kit contains everything which is necessary. The shrink wrap sheath, the two copper tubes which once crushed will connect the two electric wires, the sandpaper, etc. With a cutter we remove about 10 centimeters of sheath from the neoprene electric cable, taking care not to cut the insulator of the electric wires themselves. We then cut and peel the wires as shown in the images. Insert the pump's cable in the shrink wrap sheath and connect the two wires, black and brown, to the blue and brown wires of the neoprene cable. Cutting the two electric wires at different lengths so as to avoid any contact between the two metal couplings. We crush the two small copper tubes and test the resistance of the coupling. Note that the blue wire of the pump needs to be connected only in those countries where grounding is necessary for low voltage continuous current equipment. Using sandpaper, we now roughen the surface of the two electric wires as if we were repairing a bicycle's inner tube. Once the polished surface has been removed, taking care it does not burn, we heat the waterproof coupling using any source of heat, starting from the center outward. Here we are using a meta pastille, which is included in our kit. You will have noticed that the sheath is tightening around the cable. This means that the coupling is sticking so as to ensure it is watertight. Once the shrinking is complete, we can see that some resin has come out from the two ends of the sheath. This indicates that we have done a good job. We place the pump on the ground and after unrolling the cable, take the polyethylene pipe to connect it to the pump, as we will see. In this frame, 
and see the quick coupling which is at the top of the pump. Take care with the small parts which are inside because they must be reassembled in their original position. Here we see four small parts. A large brass lock ring, and then a notched ring in white plastic, then a small brass ring, and fourth a rubber o-ring. First we insert the pipe in the lock ring, then the white notched ring, with the conical part facing away from the lock ring, so as to adapt perfectly to the conical part of the small brass ring. On the junction part coming from the pump, the rubber o-ring must be inserted first, and after this, the small brass ring with its conical part facing outward. We now insert the pipe as far as the end stop, taking care that the conical part of the white ring placed on the pipe corresponds exactly with the conical part of the small brass ring placed on the junction. We tighten the external lock ring using an appropriate wrench. After unrolling the pipe next to the electric cable, we take the safety rope and after passing it through the two holes at the top of the pump, tie it securely. Test the knot and unroll the rope next to the pipe and cable. We now tie them together using insulating tape, leaving the electric cable longer than the others, bearing in mind that the pump is supported within the well by the pipe and that the safety rope is only there in the unlikely event that the pipe were to break or slip. What we see now is the collar which, once tightened around the pipe, will support the pump at the desired depth, in this case about 30 meters, and therefore with a relatively light load. The load would of course be much greater in the case of wells up to 150 meters. The two screws are tightened and the rope tied to the metal crossbar. The same is done with the electric cable, taking care that the pipe is shorter than the rope with the electric cable being the longest of the three. We can now lower the pump in the well, making sure that the well is free from bottlenecks and obstacles of all kinds, like old pumps or previously installed pipes. The inner edge of the well should be rounded to avoid the edge cutting the electric cable or the polythene pipe. It should be noted that the operator worked alone, thanks to the pump's weight of only 12 kilograms and the pipe used made a flexible 25 millimeter polythene. The pole which will support the solar panels has been fixed to the ground a few days beforehand with a concrete base. In this case it can be extracted so as to be able to move the pump from one well to another. In this case the panel is placed at a height of some three meters, out of reach of children and animals. When a closure is built to protect the solar panels, it can be placed at a height of not more than one and a half meters for ease of inspection and maintenance. From the crate, we now take the central part of the solar panel's support frame. In the forefront are the two watertight boxes. The one to the left contains the electronics and the one to the right, the switch with the connection ramp for the electric wires. We place the support frame at the top of the pole and, helped by a second person, fix the extensions which will support the panels with the screws supplied, following the numbered references. Once the screws have been tightened, we assemble the panels following the numbered references The panel marked 1 must be placed, looking at it from the coupling box, to your left. 
The first screws are inserted but not tightened so as to be able to move the panel if necessary within the dowel slots. We do the same with panels 2, 3 and 4, taking care to follow the order in which they are numbered. We now tighten the screws with the tools provided and proceed to the electric connections. The electric cable is inserted in the connection ramp of the first panel, connecting the brown wire to the positive terminal, which, as we can see, is marked plus. After tightening the screw, we repeat the operation with the blue wire to the negative terminal, marked minus. Close the cover of the black box well. In this case, panels 2 and 3 have been wired before shipping and therefore no connection is necessary. For panel number 4, we must instead carry out the connection as for panel number 1. Connecting the brown wire to the positive terminal, marked plus, and the blue wire to the negative terminal, marked minus. Removing the screws of the cover of the right-hand side watertight box, which contains the switch and the connection ramp, we will find a guide with the connection diagram. It is very important to carry out this phase carefully so as not to invert the positions or polarities of the cable. Beginning with the cable coming from the first pair of panels, the brown wire, which is the positive, must be connected to terminal number 9. The blue wire, which is the negative, must be connected to terminal number 10. To facilitate things, all positive wires must be connected to odd-numbered terminals and all negative wires to even-numbered terminals. Proceeding with the cable coming from panels 3 and 4, this one also must be passed through the cable clamps fixing the brown wire, which is always the positive, to terminal number 11 and the blue negative wire to terminal number 12. The electric cable coming from the pump will enter the box through the last cable clamp to your right. And, as always, the brown wire will be connected to a terminal with an odd number, number 13. We now connect the last wire to the last available terminal. Terminal number 14 will take the blue wire. To avoid losing it, Let's put the paper guide back inside the box, closing it well with its cover. Once this operation is completed, verify once more the perfect closure of all electrical boxes and the tightening of all screws and cable ends. Also verify the correct fastening of each panel. Let's now direct the panels to the south, reminding beginners that if a compass is not available, it is sufficient to check that at 12 noon, 1 p.m. in the case of summertime, the panels should directly face the sun. We can now fully tighten the screws, knowing that if any mistake has been made, in order to change the orientation, it will be sufficient to turn the support around the pole. Care should be taken not to expose the boxes of the electronic switch to direct sunlight. They should be placed in the shadow of the panels. At last, we can operate the switch placing it on 1 and after 3 or 4 minutes preceded by a slight vibration we will see water coming out of the pipe and this will happen for years as soon as there is a little sunshine with no maintenance and at zero cost.